Hey there everybody and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be walking you through the basics of exporting your flip a bit applications. For those of you that aren't familiar with flip a bit, I'll drop a link in the description to an overview, but basically it's one of two codeless application development platforms that I've been able to find or been told about that are completely free. It does have some paid features, but the majority of the actual building process is free. So I'm going to be walking through the basics of creating your Android or iOS application in this video. Feel free to drop any questions below and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button near the bottom right of the video. So let's jump straight in. I made a very basic, terribly designed application. We have a couple of random features just thrown throughout the page. And basically, we're just going to go to this build button up here. Now, one thing I want to note is when you select this, when you choose an option, it's going to tell you to create your account first. So if you click on Android, for example, it'll tell you you need your account set up. When you click the link, it'll take you to a web page. You create your account. Mine just asked for my email address, password, a username, I believe, um, some really basic, basic information. And then if you want the paid for features, which I cover in the overview, things like customizing your splash screen, um, you're going to need to go through the process separately. But I've already logged in and I'm only using a free account. So we'll name the application test one. And then you'll need the package name. This is going to correspond to the actual package information that you need. I don't really need it, so I'm just going to call it com.test1.test1. So we'll put com.test1.test1, and we will click OK. And then you'll see build started. Feel free to close this project or exit the program. We'll email you when the build finishes. So we'll click OK there. And then we're going to go ahead and click build, and we're going to build iOS, although you'll see you have a little counter right here showing you how long uh, it's, I guess, been since you've started the build, although it doesn't feel like it's already been 55 seconds. Um, but it looks like we can't select the iOS option while this build is taking place. But we can go ahead and click on Windows. So it's going to it says create self extracting exe archive, we can click yes. And then we'll just go ahead and drop this on our desktop. And you'll see it says building app. This may take a few minutes. So what I'll do is I'll pause the video here and show you what it looks like when both of these builds complete. All right, so we have opened flip a bit. You'll see um, flip a bit's actually been closed out. And I don't know if you can see the Avast window in my screen, but it's showing good news. This file looks safe. I will click close. I'm not sure if the screen recording actually captures that, but basically when you have set this up, as a self-extracting app, it looks like when you open the file, so in this case, it was this empty two that has this little flip a bit logo. It actually um, basically springs up your antivirus software. So in my case, Avast popped up saying suspicious file detected, and then it scanned it and said that it was okay. But I did want to note that that's obviously not an ideal scenario. If you're running a Windows application, a lot of your users would probably be uh, unhappy with that. But you'll see we have our fully functional application here. So you see the text, hello, this is my app, a random line graph. We can play this video here, which I will not play. And then we have the ability to use Google here. So if I Google Google, you'll see that we have a web page we can interact with. And then this was not functional to begin with. So as you can tell, you could actually have tons of use cases for a Windows application to have multiple web pages open or you could create a functionality app or you sign into gmail over here and then have different web pages that maybe refresh or you can refresh so that was the creation of the windows application very very easy uh, let's go ahead and move over to our email address to see what those files look like all right everybody so the build finished it took about seven to ten minutes i'm not quite sure what factors will come into play when it comes to actually building your application but i got a little notification that popped up here i clicked ok and if we minimize this you'll see that we get this little email address or this email to our email address that tells you here is the information or the details for this particular project so we will click on, if you click on this, it'll take you to your account page. I'm going to hide the account details, but basically if you just click on cloud in the top right, 
you get taken to your projects. So I obviously only have one available, but it looks like it's pretty simple. You have your build options, your edit options here, and we can go click download APK and you'll see your APK file in the bottom left starts to download and download AAB. So we can go ahead and download the bundles to upload to Apple or I um, or to Android pretty easily. So this process is pretty seamless and it looks like you have your cloud flip a bit web page, which is really, really easy to navigate. So you can update your profile in the top right hand corner. When you do that, you can get the paid versions to get additional functionality. But as it stands, building a basic application has actually been loading and been a seamless process. The only downside so far has just been opening those files on a Windows computer. It does seem to occasionally trip up the antivirus software, but once it's scanned, it does appear, or at least so far, it has appeared to be safe. So hope that breaks down the process for you. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, drop them in the box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.